Welcome to the Digital Academy. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I got an interesting one to check out today. This is, uh, I don't know if you've heard this term, but deep fake. Okay, so this is a crazy new world of video editing and uh, the potential to create fake videos, basically. All right, uh, hope you're doing well. Let's check this out. I think this will be pretty cool. Cheers, or uh, welcome. Digital Academy. What's up? Love you guys. Two Minute Papers. This is the first time watching this channel. Dear fellow scholars, this is Two Minute Papers with Dr. Karo Jona Ifahir. It is important for you to know that everybody can make deep fakes now. You can turn what? your head around. Mouth movements are looking great, and eye movements are also translated into the target footage. And of course, as we always say, Two more papers down the line, and it will be even better and cheaper than this. As you see, some papers are so well done and are so clear that they just speak for themselves. This is one of them. To use this technique, all you need to do is record a video of yourself, add just one image of the target one subject, image. run this learning-based algorithm, and there you go. So check out this learning-based computer algorithm. You need to record yourself talk and have one image of the face you want to talk. One image, not thousands of images, not hours of stock footage, one picture. That's insane. If you stay until the end of this video, you will see even more people introducing themselves as me. As noted, many important gestures are being translated, such as head, mouth, and eye movement, but what's even better is that even full body movement works. No way. Absolutely incredible. Now, there are plenty of techniques out there that can create deepfakes, many of which we have talked about in this series. So, what sets this one apart? Well, one, most previous algorithms required additional information, for instance, facial landmarks or a pose estimation of the target subject. This one requires no knowledge of the image. As a result, Right, so if you're wondering, like, why should you care about this is because obviously the implication of this is like, could you have video of people saying things that they didn't really say and like literally doing things that they didn't do retargeted motion, animating images by retargeting motion. Yeah, basically, it's uh, what you've seen for years when they make the video games of uh, sports and basketball players and hockey players and they, you see them with all those little motion sensor cameras it's like something like that right and how they they understand how all the different movement in the anatomy works and then digitally recreate it so now they have you now they have trump talking to somebody and going on a walk with somebody that he never talked and went on a walk with like just think about the political potential implication of fake videos, right? So that's the, kind of the general point. And then the more specific point of this video is uh, just to check out the actual technology that would actually uh, facilitate that. This technique becomes so much more general. We can create high quality deepfakes with just one photo of the target subject, make ourselves dance like a professional and- Right, so the target subjects, like say for example, uh, you want, who's somebody famous, I don't know, you want, you want to do a speech and have Elvis Presley say your speech. So it's like, okay, well, a few years ago, maybe you could take Elvis saying a whole bunch of different speeches and cut it and through a whole bunch of mixing. But now they're saying like, you, you basically need a couple pictures. It's I'm a little bit speechless because to me this is pretty mind-blowing. I haven't watched this yet and um, I kind of have heard of this deep fake idea before but I just didn't realize it was getting so easy. The implications of knowing the reality and the validity of video and then it's going to create a whole other industry of people that their whole job is trying to tell if videos are authentic or not. It's going to be interesting and weird. And what's more, 
hold on to your papers because it also works on non-humanoid and cartoon models. Oh, man. And even that's not all, we can even synthesize an animation of a robot arm by using another one as a driving sequence. So, why is it that it doesn't need all this additional information? Well, if we look under the hood, we see that it is a neural network based method that generates all this information by itself. It identifies what kind of movements and transformations are taking place in our driving video. You can see that the learned key points here follow Especially the motion of the videos really well. Yes, Tai Chi. Now we pack up all this information and send it over to the generator to warp the target image appropriately, taking into consideration possible occlusions that may occur. This means that some parts of the image may now be uncovered where we don't know what the background should look like. Normally, we would do this by hand with an image inpainting technique. Yeah. For instance, you see the le So it's like the software, not only does the software do it for you, it also self-identifies potential areas for error and suggests how to do it. It's like, well, you know, maybe your video would be better if we cut this guy out. Legendary patch match algorithm here that does it. However, in this case, the neural network does it automatically by itself. If you are seeking for flaws That's in crazy. the output, these will be important reasons. Just automatic for editing? And it not only requires less information than previous techniques, but it also outperforms them significantly. Yes, there is still room to improve this. For instance, the sudden head rotation here seems to generate an excessive amount of visual artifacts. The source code and even an example Colab notebook is available. I think it is one of the most accessible papers in this area. Don't miss out and make sure to have a look in the video description. Okay, so here you see, if anybody's watching this and wants to follow up, you can see there on the bottom left of the video embedded here, it says Siriranin et al. 2019 as the source argument, or uh, so source uh, research paper here on how a single model animates all images giving only a single source image man which is you know the other way of saying that is like you with just one picture of me you make a whole speech of me video of me saying something i didn't say in such a video based world the long-term implications of you know not being able to trust video basically whew there's, there's a million ramifications, you know, the most obvious ones are related to things like law and criminal cases and video as evidence and all that kind of stuff. And try to run your own experiments. Let me know in the comments how they went or feel free to drop by at our Discord server where all of you fellow scholars are welcome to discuss ideas and learn together in a kind and respectful environment. The link is available in the video description, it is completely free, and if you have joined, make sure to leave a short introduction. Okay. Now, of course, beyond the many amazing use cases of this in reviving deceased actors, creating beautiful visual art, redubbing movies, and more, unfortunately, there are people around the world who are rubbing their palms together in excitement to use this to their advantage. So, you may ask, why make these videos on deepfakes? Why spread this knowledge? especially now with the source codes. Well, I think step number one is to make sure to inform the public that these deepfakes can now be created quickly and yeah. inexpensively and they don't require a trained scientist anymore. If this can be done, it is of... No, and that's kind of the point this is why I'm shaking my head so much. It's not only does it not require a trained scientist, it sounds like from what this guy's saying is that once you have the software, it's like basically click and drag. You basically click on... You know, you could probably just record, I could record myself like I should, I should try to get the software and just change myself to Elvis for one of these, see if it works. It's the user friendliness of it almost that's so scary that it, it we're not talking about high end video editing necessarily. Utmost importance that we all know about it. Then beyond that, step number two, as a service to the public, I attend to EU and NATO conferences and inform key political and military decision makers about the existence and details of these techniques to make sure that they also know about these oh, and using the that knowledge talking. they can make better decisions for us. You see me doing it here. And again, cool. you see this technique in action here 
to demonstrate that it Oh my god. Okay, so obviously you're watching and following along. But the Mona Lisa is just his... Obviously that's just one picture. It works really well for video footage in the wild. Look how it's even Note that when these talks around. and consultations all happen free of charge. And if they keep inviting me, I'll keep showing up to help with this in the future as a service to the public. The cool thing is that later, over dinner, they tend to come back to me with a summary of their understanding of the situation and I highly appreciate the fact that they are open to what we, scientists, have to say. And now, Key please points. enjoy the promised footage. So, wait a sec, before he gets to his final footage, that's an interesting term, right? Key points. It's almost like, if I'm understanding this correctly, it's like, I might talk for hours in tons of different videos about tons of different topics, but my face only makes a certain amount of, even if it's hundreds or thousands, probably not, I don't know, it only makes a certain, a finite amount of, of actual positions and key points. So a computer could easily map that. Okay, so let's see, this guy's, we waited, we got his explanation, this guy's got my uh, attention. Let's see this final video, final uh, example. Dear fellow scholars, this is Two Minute Papers with Dr. Karo Jona Ifahir. It is important for you to know that everybody can stare right at one. It's crazy. You can turn your head around. Mouth movements are looking great, and eye movements are also translated into the target footage. And of course, as we always say, two more papers down the line, and it will be even better and cheaper. So you can still, especially if you watch Game of Thrones and you like look up at Khaleesi or whatever, and you just like really watch her face. Your brain knows it's fake. Um, but again, it's like, man, give it a few more versions. That's incredible. We're done this. This episode has been supported by Waits. All right, so I think that's it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that. That's crazy, eh? Um, so you'll hear more about this, I'm sure, going forward. But that's... That is pretty neat. I see it, you could... You know, the, the thing is, is that you you can go both ways, right? Like so much technology, like the the creepier, dangerous or potentially criminal side of it is worrying. The fun side of it, though, is, I don't know, you could do fun things. Like I could make a video of my daughter and singing a song and then make her look like Elvis or something like that. And like you could make hilarious like Evite. Uh, birthday cards. I don't know why I'm saying that. That's a kind of dumb ending. But uh, yeah, man, what a crazy idea. Like the more serious reflection would be to think of the political implications of like fake video or of like a video of you coming out that's not real, but that looks really real and that's, you know, compromising or whatever. All right, anyways, I hope you found that interesting. Deep fakes, now that's a word that you know, and it means this ability to create video that looks like it's real, that's fake, but that it's the the depth of the video um, software editing is such that, you know, it's, it's starting to question the validity of video in general. Anyways, yeah, I think in 10, 15 years, it's gonna be crazy how advanced that kind of stuff is. Um, have a good night. Hope you're doing well. Keep your head up and uh, take care.